Hypertext. Hypertext is text displayed on a computer display or other electronic devices with references, hyperlinks, to other texts that the reader can immediately access. Hypertext documents are interconnected by hyperlinks, which are typically activated by a mouse click, key press set, or by touching the screen. Apart from text, the term hypertext is also sometimes used to describe tables, images, and other presentational content formats with integrated hyperlinks. Hypertext is one of the key underlying concepts of the World Wide Web, where web pages are often written in the hypertext markup language, HTML. As implemented on the web, hypertext enables the easy to use publication of information over the Internet. The English prefix hyper comes from the Greek prefix by epsilon rho, and means over or beyond. It has a common origin with the prefix super, which comes from Latin. It signifies the overcoming of the previous linear constraints of written text. The term hypertext is often used where the term hypermedia might seem appropriate. In 1992, author Ted Nelson, who coined both terms in 1963, wrote hypertext documents can either be static, prepared and stored in advance, or dynamic, continually changing in response to user input, such as dynamic web pages. Static hypertext can be used to cross-reference collections of data in documents, software applications, or books on CD apostrophe S.A. Well-constructed system can also incorporate other user interface conventions, such as menus and command lines. Links used in a hypertext document usually replace the current piece of hypertext with the destination document. A lesser-known feature is stretch text, which expands or contracts the content in place thereby giving more control to the reader and determining the level of detail of the displayed document. Some implementations support transclusion, where text or other content is included by reference and automatically rendered in place. Hypertext can be used to support very complex and dynamic systems of linking and cross-referencing. The most famous implementation of hypertext is the World Wide Web, written in the final months of 1990 and released on the Internet in 1991. In 1941, Jorge Luis Borges published The Garden of Forking Paths, a short story that is often considered an inspiration for the concept of hypertext. In 1945, Vannevar Bush wrote an article in the Atlantic Monthly called As We May Think, about a futuristic proto-hypertext device he called a Mimex. A Mimex would hypothetically store, and record, content on reels of microfilm, using electric photo cells to read coded symbols recorded next to individual microfilm frames while the reels spun at high speed stopping on command. The coded symbols would enable the mimics to index, search, and link content to create and follow associated trails. Because the mimics was never implemented and could only link content in a relatively crude fashion, by creating chains of entire microfilm frames, the mimics is now regarded only as a proto-hypertext device, but it is fundamental to the history of hypertext because it directly inspired the invention of hypertext by Ted Nelson and Douglas Engelbart. In 1963, Ted Nelson coined the terms hypertext and hypermedia as part of a model he developed for creating and using link content, first published reference 1965. He later worked with Andries Van Dam to develop the hypertext editing system, text editing, in 1967 at Brown University. By 1976, its successor Fress was used in a poetry class in which students could browse a hyperlinked set of poems and discussion by experts, faculty and other students, in what was arguably the world's first online scholarly community which Van Dam says foreshadowed wikis, blogs and communal documents of all kinds. Ted Nelson said in the 1960s that he began implementation of a hypertext system he theorized, which was named Project Xanadu, but his first and incomplete public release was finished much later, in 1998. Douglas Engelbart independently began working on his NLS system in 1962 at Stanford Research Institute, although delays in obtaining funding, personnel, and equipment meant that its key features were not completed until 1968. In December of that year, Engelbart demonstrated a hypertext, meaning a dieting, interface to the public for the first time, in what has come to be known as the mother of all demos. The first hypermedia application is generally considered to be the Aspen Movie Map, implemented in 1978. The Movie Map allowed users to arbitrarily choose which way they wished to drive in a virtual cityscape, in two seasons, from actual photographs, as well as 3D polygons. In 1980, Tim Berners-Lee created Inquire, an early hypertext database system somewhat like a wiki but without hypertext punctuation, which was not invented until 1987. 
The early 1980s also saw a number of experimental hyper-editing functions in word processors and hypermedia programs, many of whose features and terminology were later analogous to the World Wide Web. Guide, the first significant hypertext system for personal computers, was developed by Peter J. Brown at UKC in 1982. In 1980 Roberto Busa, an Italian Jesuit priest and one of the pioneers in the usage of computers for linguistic and literary analysis, published the Index Thomisticus, as a tool for performing text searches within the massive corpus of Aquinas's works. Sponsored by the founder of IBM, Thomas J. Watson, the project lasted about 30 years, 1949 to 1980, and eventually produced the 56 printed volumes of the Index Thomisticus the first important hypertext work about St. Thomas Aquinas books and of a few related authors. In 1983, Ben Schneiderman at the University of Maryland Human Computer Interaction Lab led a group that developed the Hypertize system that was commercialized at the Cognetics Corporation. Hypertize was used to create the July 1988 issue of the Communications of the ACM as a hypertext document and then the first commercial electronic book Hypertext Hands-On. In August 1987, Apple Computer released HyperCard for the Macintosh line at the Macworld Convention. Its impact, combined with interest in Peter J. Brown's guide, marketed by OWL and released earlier that year, and Brown University's Intermedia, led to broad interest in an enthusiasm for hypertext, hypermedia, databases, and new media in general. The first ACM hypertext, hyperediting and databases, academic conference took place in November 1987, in Chapel Hill NC, where many other applications, including the branched literature writing software Storespace, were also demonstrated. Meanwhile, Nelson, who had been working on and advocating his Xanadu system for over two decades, convinced Autodesk to invest in his revolutionary ideas. The project continued at Autodesk for four years, but no product was released. In 1989, Tim Berners Lee, then a scientist at CERN, proposed and later prototyped a new hypertext project in response to a request for a simple, immediate, information sharing facility to be used among physicists working at CERN and other academic institutions. He called the project World Wide Web. In 1992, Lynx was born as an early Internet web browser. Its ability to provide hypertext links within documents that could reach into documents anywhere on the Internet began the creation of the web on the Internet. As new web browsers were released, traffic on the World Wide Web quickly exploded from only 500 known web servers in 1993 to over 10,000 in 1994. As a result, all previous hypertext systems were overshadowed by the success of the web, even though it lacked many features of those earlier systems, such as integrated browsers editors, a feature of the original World Wide Web browser, which was not carried over into most of the other early web browsers. Besides the already mentioned Project Xanadu, Hypertext Editing System, NLS, HyperCard, and World Wide Web, there are other noteworthy early implementations of Hypertext, with different feature sets. Among the top academic conferences for new research in Hypertext is the annual ACM Conference on Hypertext and Hypermedia. Although not exclusively about Hypertext, the World Wide Web series of conferences, organized by IW3C2, Include many papers of interest. There is a list on the web with links to all conferences in the series. Hypertext writing has developed its own style of fiction, coinciding with the growth and proliferation of hypertext development software and the emergence of electronic networks. Two software programs specifically designed for literary hypertext, Storespace and Intermedia, became available in the 1990s. On the other hand, concerning the Italian production, the Hypertext S O O O T O O O D by Filippo Rosso, 2002, was intended to lead the reader, with the help of a three dimensional map, in a web page interface, and was written in HTML and PHP. An advantage of writing a narrative using hypertext technology is that the meaning of the story can be conveyed through a sense of spatiality and perspective. A thought is arguably unique to digitally networked environments. An author's creative use of nodes, the self-contained units of meaning in a hypertextual narrative, can play with the reader's orientation and add meaning to the text. One of the most successful computer games, Myst, was first written in HyperCard. The game was constructed as a series of ages, each age consisting of a separate HyperCard stack. The full stack of the game consists of over 2,500 cards. 
in some ways MIST redefined interactive fiction, using puzzles and exploration as a replacement for hypertextual narrative. Critics of hypertext claim that it inhibits the old, linear, reader experience by creating several different tracks to read on, and that this in turn contributes to a postmodernist fragmentation of worlds. In some cases, hypertext may be detrimental to the development of appealing stories, in the case of hypertext gamebooks, where ease of linking fragments may lead to non-cohesive or incomprehensible narratives. However, they do see value in its ability to present several different views on the same subject in a simple way. This echoes the arguments of medium theorists like Marshall McLuhan who look at the social and psychological impacts of the media. New media can become so dominant in public culture that they effectively create a paradigm shift as people have shifted their perceptions, understanding of the world, and ways of interacting with the world and each other in relation to new technologies and media. So hypertext signifies a change from linear, structured and hierarchical forms of representing and understanding the world into fractured, decentralized and changeable media based on the technological concept of hypertext links. Importantly, this development puts the reader, rather than the author, at the center of the paradigm made available by hypertexts. Yet the figure of the reader in much editorial theory often remains abstract and even mystified in modern scholarship. In the 1990s, women and feminist artists took advantage of hypertext and produced dozens of works. Linda Dement's Cyber Flesh Girl Monster a hypertext drama that incorporates images of women's body parts and remixes them to create new monstrous yet beautiful shapes. Dr. Caitlin Fisher's award-winning online hypertext novella These Waves of Girls is set in three time periods of the protagonist exploring polymorphous perversity enacted in her queer identity through memory. The story is written as a reflection diary of the interconnected memories of childhood, adolescence, and adulthood. It consists of an associated multimodal collection of nodes includes linked text, still and moving images, manipulable images, animations, and sound clips. There are various forms of hypertext, each of which are structured differently. Below are four of the existing forms of hypertext. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.